Okay, I'm going to look at um, a bit of microscopy, um, particularly the, the calculations, which uh, tend to cause a few problems. So to start mentioning um, the idea of the, the lenses. So most of the eyepiece lenses, the one you look straight down, uh, that you'll come across are going to be uh, times 10 magnification. Don't get too hung up on this time sign at the front. You know, don't think of it as a, a multiplication sign, in, because we're going to do some maths for it in a minute. Just think of it meaning magnification of 10. You know, that's the one way you can think of it. Um, the objective lenses, the ones that you would spin round, you know, there's maybe two or three depending on your microscope. Um, as typical values, you might get a, a times four, a times 10, and say times 40. Um, all you would do to work out your overall magnification is multiply the, the, the two numbers together. So um, if you're looking down that objective lens, it'd be 4 times 10, so the overall magnification would be 40. If you're looking through that one, it'd be 10 times 10, so the overall magnification would be 100. And that one, 10 times 40, would be uh, 400. Okay, You're not really going to get uh, much beyond that um, in, in most of the microscopes you're going to come across um, at this level. Um, you would always start focusing using the, the lowest objective lens first. It would be the easiest to get the focus on. You'll then use the um, the two focusing knobs, which are the coarse one, which is the, the bigger one of the two, so you can uh, wind your way down quickly. And then the fine focusing one, which will be the smaller one, sometimes it even has a little scale on it, uh, which will allow you to, to zoom in a little bit more. Remember as well that when you start off with your microscope, you start with the stage as high as possible and you wind the focus knob so it moves down. Uh, and this avoids the uh, the sample on your slide coming into contact with the objective lenses. So you start high and, and uh, move it down. Okay, um, when it comes to drawing the um, cells and what you observe, there are a set of, of rules that you'd be expected to observe. And they are in the, uh, the textbook on, on page 13, actually. Um, you will need to draw in pencil. You will need to... Um, it's more or less doing a line drawing, okay? I'm not shading things in. If I was drawing a plant cell here, you know, maybe I could see the nucleus. Let's imagine I can see a, a vacuole in there as well. Um, I'm not colouring and shading things in and doing loads and loads of detail. It's, it's not important. You know, if I was going to draw another one here, whatever, it, it's, it's quite plain. Um, you would use a ruler to um, put labels on. Make sure your labels actually touch the part. It's no good to be drawing a, a, a line that sort of ends halfway through because that wouldn't be pointing to the bit I wanted to point to. So you know, I could label my parts up. Ideally, I'd be using a pen here, but I want to swap nucleus, vacuole, and so on. You know, cell wall. Labeling the parts I can see. If I can't see a cell membrane on here, there's no point in me pretending I can. Um, my lines are straight. They're actually parallel. Um, to the top of the sheet, I don't cross them over. I don't, you know, I'm not going to put my vacuole here and do a line going up there. Uh, it sounds like minor points, but it's actually important. Don't draw arrowheads on either. Okay. So that's um, when it comes to the the drawing part. Um, it, sometimes it helps. You, you know, they, they suggest you use as much of the paper as possible. Sometimes it helps to kind of draw yourself a, a bit of an outline of, of what you can actually see. So if I was you know, looking down the microscope, I think, well, how big is that in proportion to what I'm actually drawing? Sometimes it might say to you draw two or three cells. Um, I don't need to fill the entire thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm giving it an indicative size there. Sometimes people are happy drawing like this. Um, you would also be inspected to. Uh, include on this the magnification, but I'm not going to write the magnification on. Um, in fact, I will. Yes, why, why don't I? So I'm just going to imagine for a second that this is on a times 800 magnification. Okay, and I would say what it is. Um, you know, red onion cell um, times 800 magnification. There, there's my drawing. Okay, I know. Well, let's put the cell wall on for completeness. There we go. Uh, cellular cell wall. So. Um, the bit that tends to be tricky is when it comes to doing these measurements. Now, you wouldn't necessarily be measuring from your own drawings. You know, you might get this as a question. It says, well, here's a cell. Um, how big is it? Okay, so what I've done now is I've just redrawn the same diagram we had before, but instead of labelling things this time, I'm going to work out the size of it. So you might be given a picture. Um, sometimes they give you a line. They actually want to draw one on it. So, um, for example, you know, they, they might say... Um, taking the length of line 
A, B or something, you know, they might call it A to B. Other times they might ask you and just say, well, what's the width of the cell? And you might think, well, it depends where I measure it. It's different there to over there. It doesn't matter. They can work these things out. That's why sometimes they draw a line to make sure there's, there's no um, problems with it. Um, but don't worry if you're thinking, well, which part do I actually measure? If it says measure the length, it's always going to be, you know, only sort of a millimetre or so different, and they'll allow that in, within the answer. So, first thing to think of is, what's this formula? And this is where a lot of people um, miss out a bit. In the book, it, it's got this, I don't like these things, these triangle formulas. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of them, but that's what's in the book. Um, I'll show you a different way to work with it in a second. The way I was always thinking of it is, whatever the size is of that cell, if that picture I'm looking at is 800 times bigger than the real one, the real one must be 800 times smaller. So however big this picture is, this image, if I divide it by the magnification, I'll get the real or the actual size of the cell. Okay, and I, I think it makes sense that way. If I'm looking at a picture that has been magnified 800 times, whatever the real one was, was 800 times smaller, or if it was you know, multiplied by 400 times, or times four, or times 10, or times, it doesn't matter what it is. So, first step we're gonna do is measure our line. As it happens, that comes in at 72 millimeters. Now it's worth here converting it to micrometers. Reason being, um, cells are in that kind of signs range of, of micrometers or micrometers if you prefer, or mu or microns, I call them micrometers. Um, so what we do first of all is convert it to micrometers. Now since one millimeter is a thousand micrometers, 72 millimeters are 72 thousand micrometers. So it's literally a case of multiplying it by a thousand. Okay, so that's the size of my image, the thing I can see. Um, my magnification is 80, um, and now it's simply a case of putting the numbers together. So um, 72,000 micrometers across. Remember the size of the image, although I measured it in millimeters first of all, I've converted it into micrometers. You can do it without doing that. I'll show you what it looks like if you don't bother doing that, but you'll see why it's easier this way in a second. So 72,000 um, divided by 80, and we come up with an answer of 900. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've just seen my error. Sorry. Divided by 800, not 80. I'm looking at that thinking that's a bizarre number. See how easy this is to do. Um, so divided by 800, which is my magnification, and my answer is 90. And that answer now will come out in micrometers. Um, so the size of that cell is 90 micrometers. Okay. Now, the reason I realized I've made a mistake halfway through is I know that plant cells aren't 900 micrometers long, that's nearly a millimeter. Um, typically they're you know, maybe 50, 60, 70, 80 microns, whatever it may be. So I know straight away from, hang on, my number just didn't seem right there, something's gone wrong. So I can go back and think, where have I gone wrong? Ah, I put 80 rather than 800, and I'm checking myself. If this was an animal cell, I'd expect it to be maybe 20, 30, 40 micrometers big. So I know that if my answer comes out wildly off, I've gone wrong somewhere. Okay, so it's worth having a rough guide, um, a, a rough idea of the size of things like plant cells, um, animal cells, and perhaps even some of the organelles, particularly mitochondria. You know, they're a popular one to get asked, um, working out sizes. Once you know what those approximate sizes are, you've got this self-check, just like I did here, of how uh, how large are the things. Um, and I'll, I think I'll go through um, what if you've got, instead of working this way, sometimes they ask you about the magnification, working on magnification. I'll do that one in a second, just to show you, because there's a particular problem that comes up with that one. Uh, but I did say I would show you what happens if you don't convert to micrometers, first of all. Okay, so I measure my line again, and I just keep it in millimeters this time. So it comes out at 71 millimeters. So I do 71, and I divide it by 800. Now what I come out with, is that the number here? 72, sorry. Um, 72, and I divide it by 800. Now I come out with 0 0.09. Now that's fine, but that number is in millimeters and it doesn't look as 
it's the same number. That's exactly the same thing. 90, 90 micrometers and 0 0.909 millimeters are exactly the same number. But because we're used to measuring cells in micrometers, that looks a lot more familiar and it's a lot easier to work with. You know, I, I could work it out in terms of meters if I really wanted. Um, you know, I, I could say that my that the size of um, let's think of this. It's going to be naught point um, naught seven two meters if i wanted to do that divide it by 800 again what do i get there Not by 800 yeah now does that make sense to you maybe it does if you're a mathematician you might be looking at that saying yeah what's the problem um but i think it's far far easier to work in micrometers so measure the length times by a thousand to get it in micrometers divide it by your magnification occasionally you'll see uh, you'll come across things where they want you to work things out in nanometers perhaps if you're working out the size and thickness of cell membrane nanometers you would multiply in millimeters by a million but then you go through the same process and that would come out giving you answer in nanometers